Hello and welcome to the show. As Qantas prepares to announce losses of up to $300 million for the half year on Thursday, confirmation today that the federal government will relax foreign ownership restrictions, essentially changes to the Qantas Sale Act, dropping the 49% foreign ownership limit and restrictions on foreign airlines holding more than a 35% stake. Remember, though, the opposition, Labour and Greens, have already vowed to block any such move in the Senate, which would, of course, stop it becoming law. Meanwhile, new reports today suggesting job cuts previously forecast at 2,000 could now be closer to 5,000. Qantas responding, saying it's making tough decisions on $2 billion of cost savings, but it's refused to confirm or deny the 5,000 job loss figure. Greg Bamber is Professor of Management and Business at Monash University. He's written books on the aviation industry. He's got his eye on this developing story for you. And he joins me now live from our Melbourne studio. Professor Bamber, a warm welcome into the show. Uh, did you see it coming, as it were, the story that is set to unfold Thursday? How surprised are you that we've got into this position for the flying kangaroo? We have seen the story coming because Qantas have foreshadowed the need to uh, cut costs by something like $2 billion and Qantas was indicating it would be cutting at least a thousand jobs. This was all flagged towards the end of last year. So it's not a surprise for the flying kangaroo and Qantas has been busy lobbying government, uh, asking government to come to its assistance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and we, we therefore see this classic ideological impasse, do we not? The so-called wets and the dries of this government, uh, those in favour of state aid, those saying let the market decide. Uh, you'd acknowledge, would you, that a Pandora's box would be opened if money was flung one way and not the other? Well, that's right. Mm. It's not easy for government to justify helping Qantas financially with taxpayers' money currently, whilst government has not come to the assistance of Holden, Ford, SPC and, and, and so forth, who've been hemorrhaging jobs mm -hmm. in other parts of Australia. Mm. Professor Banda, how much does all this go back to understanding the business you're in. I know that might sound a little trite, but I'm keen to compare and contrast mission statements of not only Qantas, but Southwestern Airlines. I'm doing that in part because of what you've written on this. It is going back a couple of years now, but I think it, it does warrant some attention. If we, I'm not sure if you can see from where you're sitting an output screen, but if we're going to now put up, for the benefit of viewers, the Qantas mission statement, we do that. Let's animate into that. Lose the strap. Can you see that from where you're sitting, Professor Bamber? Talk to me. Well, actually, maybe you... Mission statement. Yeah. And it's a very good question because mm. uh, Qantas is proposing to cut many, many jobs on the one hand. And on the other hand, one of the ways that Qantas is going to succeed is by giving better customer service mm. and by threatening to cut jobs wholesale it's not going to motivate the staff at Qantas yeah. to deliver superb customer yeah. service and this can be contrasted with Southwest yeah. Airlines in the United States which is supremely successful as a an airline that began more than 40 years ago. It's been profitable every year since it began. It's never retrenched any member mm. of staff and it's yeah. continued to grow. It's had yeah. no assistance from government and it works in a very close partnership with its workforce and the unions that represent its workforce. All right, well, uh, to your point on customer service, I've just brought up the Southwestern mission statement. That is flagged right at the start. The mission dedicated to the highest quality of customer service. It's, a, it's barely four lines from what people can see on screen. The Qantas one, I put to you, Professor Bamber, there's no mention of the customer, number one. Number two, reflecting Australia is almost an afterthought 
It's the very last line. Just go back to the Qantas one if you can. Change back onto that. How problematic is that? Well, Southwest has a very simple mission statement, and it's very clear to everyone associated with Southwest, all the stakeholders, and, and it sees its stakeholders as the customers, local communities, and the people who work in Southwest, and they're all focused on working in harmony mm. to deliver good jobs and good service yeah. and good returns to the shareholders. The problem is with a very long mission statement and a very mm. long list of priorities and, and areas of cutting that mm. leads to confusion and mm. not a focus on a very clear set of outcomes. So we'll be looking to Qantas mm. when it declares its results on Thursday to indicate very clearly mm. what it's going to do. Is it, and it's is, not well, going to is it time? Ahead. Is it time to change the mission statement? Or does that actually, is that counterproductive midway through such an extensive review? Or is it welcomed as, as it were, drawing a line under things past and recasting the future? Well, it might well be appropriate to reconsider the mission statements in due course, but the immediate priority is for Qantas to stop hemorrhaging in the way that it is doing and to refocus its business trying to get the workforce engaged and on side mm -hmm. as well as the customers yeah. and these these are two sides of the same coin and right. that's one of the lessons from looking at Southwest yeah. that we learn. As you say keeping the workers in, uh, engaged uh, what's intriguing as you flag Southwest probably the most highly unionized airline in the United States What's been the critical breakthrough that's made that, that's, uh, that dialogue so harmonious? The critical breakthrough has been treating the workforce and the customers and the owners as equal partners, if you like. Mm. And Southwest is not only highly unionised, but it also pays high wages, high mm. salaries to its workforce and delivers good benefits to its owners and doesn't try and achieve productivity by slashing mm. wage costs, it uses other techniques to improve productivity. Mm. And that would be a lesson that Qantas might usefully try to learn from mm. Southwest. Uh, is it possible to replicate the operating strategy? By here I'm, I'm talking about the rapid turnarounds, uh, in flight departures, uh, getting those gate agents, the operating agents, the flight attendants, everything running in lockstep. That's a perennial issue for Qantas, is it not? Uh, yes, it is, and it's not easy for Qantas. Qantas is a very fine airline. We all want to see Qantas succeed, but it mm. is a legacy airline with a history going back more than 90 years, mm. and it's not easy to achieve culture change in those legacy kind of conditions. Mm. Virgin Australia has tried to learn from the uh, the Southwest playbook, if you like, and has tried to an extent to replicate what mm. Southwest has been very successful at in terms of engaging the workforce and mm. the customers and the people who own it. Mm. How much of this all starts and finishes with the CEO? Because you've made comparisons with Ryanair, and I think potentially there's a link, is there not, with Mr. Joyce's background and Mr. O'Leary's, given they both hail from Ireland, in that respect, it's not just a nationality issue, but could it also be a cultural one as well? Well, many fine people hail from Ireland. I've got some Irish blood in me myself, so mm. I don't think it's a question mm. of the Irish um, influence, if you like. But Michael O'Leary, the chief executive of Ryanair, is on the one hand very charismatic, on the other hand he treats the workforce in a rather mean way and he treats his customers in a, a mean and lean kind of way. Mm -hmm. uh, the only real benefit he offers to his customers is very cheap fares and he sometimes uh, has been found guilty of breaking the law in the European courts, in the British and the Irish courts and he doesn't worry about that. He uses mm -hmm. those breaches as a way of generating more publicity for his cheap fares airline. But that mm. strategy in some ways is a short-term strategy. I'd like to encourage our airlines in Australia to look more towards the medium and longer term mm. in developing sustainable businesses and good 
air transport connections for us in Australia. Yeah. None of us wants to see our airlines go bankrupt again in the way that they did in terms of ANSET and Compass and so forth. Yeah, I should stress when it comes to that uh, ancestry, I was perhaps just more looking for that link, as you rightly flagged. It's not so much that he hails from Ireland as that uh, potentially he's learnt from the playbook of Mr O'Leary in part in terms of uh, similar strategies, having been at the helm of Jetstar in a previous life. Just on Jetstar, is it, uh, to your mind, from a management perspective, is it clearing or clouding the issue to be aiming for a premium airline whilst also ploughing energies into a low-cost model like Jetstar? Well, uh, great question. And most of the big legacy airlines around the world mm that have tried to set up low-cost airlines like Jetstar, British Airways had a go, several of the American airlines had a go, have failed because they found that the new startup low-cost airline was starting to cannibalize their business. Now Qantas so far has been successful in riding two horses, in riding the Qantas mainline as well as the Jetstar operation. But many people are starting to question why Qantas should be pouring more resource into Jetstar operations in Vietnam, in Hong Kong and China, in Singapore and in Japan on the one hand, while on the other hand seeking funding from the Australian taxpayers to support its mainline business here in Australia. So I think in the options that Qantas are announcing on Thursday, there may well be some attention paid to Jetstar and possibly scaling back some of the Jetstar right. operation. Greg, thank you so much for joining the program. Appreciate your insights. Thank you. All right. Well, Professor Greg Bamber there from the University of Monash, Monash University.